This lesson deals with sequential switching. You can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in chapter 7 starting on page 19. Sequential switching is whenever switching occurs more than once in a circuit. Suppose we have a circuit with two switches in it and that this switch opens at t equals 0 and the second switch opens at a later time, say 35 milliseconds. Let's solve for the voltage across and the current through this 150 millihenry inductor. This is an, a circuit that has one inductance, resistances, and in this case only one voltage source. We have an algorithm for solving this class of circuits, but what's different here is we've got a second switching event at 35 milliseconds. So let's still follow our algorithm and let's deal with the case of 35 milliseconds. So up to 35 milliseconds we have the form of a first order differential equation, which is some a plus b e to the minus t over tau. Now we're solving for two things here, so let's use a 1 and a 2 subscript for a and b. The time constant though will be the same for both the current and the inductance and the voltage cross it. In fact, anything we solve for in this circuit between 0 and 35 milliseconds. All right, second step then is to find the pre-switching conditions of the, the variables that we're interested in. And minimally, we have to have the current in the inductance because that's the one thing that won't change between steps 2 and 3. But we already got that covered, so we're, we're okay. So if, if an inductance has been in a circuit a very long time, it looks like a short circuit, and the voltage across it is 0. And that means that the voltage across this resistance is also 0. And I want to solve for this current. That's equal to the current that's entering the node equals the current that leaves the node. The current here, though, is going to be 0 volts divided by 18, so there's 0 here. So the current in this 3 ohm resistance is the same as the inductance current. Now with the short circuit here, we have the 18 in parallel with the short, but anything in parallel with the short is just a short. And again, the way to prove that is if you take their formula for parallel combinations, it would be 0 times 18 over 0 plus 18 which is zero. So the three ohm, the six ohm, the 12 ohm are all in parallel. And if we can find the voltage across the parallel combination, then I can find that same voltage here. And the current would just be dividing by the three ohms. So I've got 12 in parallel with six and parallel with three, forming a voltage divider with four, get about 18 volts. Take that 18 volts and divide it by three ohms. And that's the current in the resistance. And that'd be the current that flows in this inductance. Step three is to find the value of our variables after the switch has changed state. Now he's looking at the first switch here at t equals zero, which is going from a short to an open. The current flowing in here though was six amps before we were switching, so it must still be six amps. Remember V is equal to L dIdt. If the current jumps instantaneously, we have to produce or supply infinite voltage. And then from our equation in step one, this is A1 plus B1 times E to the minus T, minus T zero divided by tau one, but uh, this is gonna be just A1 plus B1 times E to the zero, which is A1 plus B1. So let's solve for the voltage cross here. Now with the switch open, we've got no other current coming in. And so I've got this nine ohms in parallel with the 18. You think of that just as one resistance. And this current is gonna flow into that one resistance. And that one resistance would be 18 in parallel with nine. So product over the sum, turns out to be six. And the current though is gonna be flowing in this direction, producing a drop like this. So the six amps times that six ohms will produce 36 volts in this direction, but our V sub L is defined oppositely, so a minus 36. And again, that'd be A2 plus B2 times E to the zero. Our next step is to find what happens as T approaches infinity. But in this case, we're gonna have the switch changing state at 35 milliseconds. How are we gonna deal with that? Well, the circuit doesn't know that that's gonna happen, so it's following the solution of this differential equation, thinking that this switch is gonna remain closed. Why don't we just use that fact to find the values of our A2 and B2 and A1 and B1, and then we can solve for our equation and then take a look at its value at 35 milliseconds when this switch changes state. So let's still treat this like we did before. It becomes a short circuit if we leave it in the circuit long enough. And that means that the voltage across this resistance is also zero, no current here. But with no voltage here, I've got really no voltage around here. Think of it as a voltage divider of six over six plus three times zero. And this would be three over six plus three times zero. So zero volts and zero volts. The voltage across here is zero. It's gonna be equal to A2 plus B2 times E to the minus infinity, which is just A2. But the current here is just gonna be equal to this current plus this current, really the negative of it, but that's also zero. And it's gonna be A1 plus B1 times E to the minus infinity. Now I have the values of A1 and A2. Still need to find the time constant. So we're gonna look back from the inductance, really after the first switch has changed state find the equivalent resistance. Yeah, it's going to be our 18 in parallel with 9, which we found before to be 6. That makes our time constant 150 millihenries divided by 6 or 25 milliseconds. So now in step 6, we can find the solution to our equation. This equation is only going to be valid up to that switching time at 35 milliseconds. So A1 plus B1 was 6. A1 was 0, so B1 is 6. 
So I sub L is six times e to the minus t over 25 milliseconds. And this is valid for t greater than zero and less than 35 milliseconds. But because it's an inductance current, it's also true at the boundary condition. So it's also true at t equals zero and at t equals 35 milliseconds. Then we found that before the switch changed state that we had six amps. Now the voltage across conducts A2 plus B2, which is minus 36, we found that A2 is zero, so B2 is minus 36. Voltage can change instantaneously, so we're not going to include the equality at 0 and 35 milliseconds. We did find that the voltage across the inductance was 0 for T less than 0 because it was sitting in a circuit in steady state. Okay, so these are our equations that are valid for up to 35 milliseconds. 35 milliseconds, the second switch opens, and we again have a resistor battery inductor circuit. So we would have the same form of the solution. It would be some A plus B e to the minus T minus T0 over tau. But we're going to solve for two things again, so let's use the subscript, say 3 and 4. And our T0 is going to be 35 milliseconds, and we'll have most likely a different time constant because our circuit's changed in its topology or structure. And this step 7 is really our step 1 when we had a single switch in our circuit. Our next step was to find the pre-switching conditions, in this case for our current and voltage of the inductance. This would be at 35 milliseconds minus. We would be treating the inductance like a short circuit, but actually what it's been doing is this last set of equations. So we could evaluate these equations just before the switch change state. We're going to take a look at 35 milliseconds, really to the left of it, just a little bit prior to, to hitting that particular time. But that's roughly the same as 35 milliseconds. So we could stick that into our previous equations and get the value of the current in the inductance and the voltage across the inductance just before the second switch change state. Now the second switch opens and we disconnect 18 ohm load. Now the current that was flowing in the inductance was what we just calculated, 1.48 amps, and so that must still be there. Current in the inductance just before the switching at 35 milliseconds is still the same here, because again, if we had a jump in current, we'd have to produce an infinite voltage. That's not possible. And so we have 1.48 amps. That's gonna be A3 plus B3 times E to the minus T minus 35 milliseconds. And again, we just cross that 35 milliseconds, so that's E to the zero over tau two. So it's A3 plus B3. The voltage across the inductance is gonna be the voltage across these two resistance with the opposite signs. So we've got the 1.48 amps and the nine ohms producing 13.32 volts, but it's the opposite sign of our assigned problem. So that's gonna be A4 plus B4 times E to the zero. We can let T approach infinity again, but this time nothing's gonna happen. It's stated in original problem. We can now analyze the circuit again with the switch open. The inductance would look like a short circuit. And so that's gonna be a4 plus b4 times e to the minus infinity, or just a4. And the current flowing in here, again, we've got nothing connected here, nothing connected here. There's zero volts across here, so there's zero volts across this combination. And finding the current in this direction would be the negative of this voltage, so minus zero divided by nine, still zero, and that's gonna be a3 plus b3 times e to the minus infinity, or tau two. And that's just gonna be equal to a3. And lastly, we'll find in our next step, the resistance seen by our inductance with the second switch changing state. And now all we see is just the three ohms in series with the six ohms. I guess it's nine ohms with the same 150 millihenry inductor, 16.66 milliseconds. So now we can find the solution, this aspect of our problem. So it's A3 plus B3 was 1.48. We found that A3 was zero, so B3 is 1.48. So I can put my equation together then as A3 plus B3 e to the minus T minus T zero over tau two. And this is valid for T greater than 35 milliseconds, but because it's an inductance, again, the quality also applies. For the voltage across the inductance, it's A4 plus B4, that was a minus 13.32, but A4 was zero, and so B4 is just my, minus 13.32. So our equation again is A4 plus B4 e to the minus T minus T zero over tau two. This is valid for T greater than 35 milliseconds, but there was a jump in voltage. We'd gone from a previous value of minus 8.88 to minus 13.32 as we made the transition with the switch. So if we sketch that, we started out with six amps in the inductance, and we had a time constant tau one, and that began to decay to about 1.48 amps at 35 milliseconds, and then a second time constant, a little different, and it will take five time constants for this to discharge, and that's gonna be five times the value we found for tau two, and that would be about 83 milliseconds. Now well, the voltage across the inductance started out at zero, jumped to minus 36, discharged to minus 8.88, and then it jumped to minus 13.32, and now the second time constant as we discharge back to zero. This is what our circuit would look like with 
two switching events. And then we could actually start switching the circuits back on and off again. We could predict really any type of a switching circuit. Again, it's kind of tedious, but we can actually apply the methods that we've learned before. Now we could formally state this as an algorithm. First step is to formulate the equations or the activity of the first switch. It's a form of a first order differential equation. We'll find the pre-switching conditions. If this was an RL circuit, we'd be looking at the inductor current just before uh, we switch or the capacitor voltage. Also treat the capacitor as an open circuit and the inductor as a short circuit. It is sitting in a circuit in steady state. Then we would find the initial conditions. That's gonna give us uh, A1 plus B1 using the fact that, that the voltage across the capacitance and the current through the inductance cannot jump instantaneously. Then we will find the value at infinity by opening the capacitor and shorting the inductor. It gives us the value the value of A1. We'll find the Rathevenin resistance seen by the capacitance or the inductance, and then it'll form our time constant. And then we can use that to find the solution. It's valid up to this activity of the next switch. And literally just repeat this same process again. We'll formulate a new set of equations. Again, first order differential equation. All we've done is change the configuration or topology of our circuit. We still have a one capacitor or a one inductance circuit. Find pre-switching conditions, but this time we're going to use the solution we just found previously because it'll allow us to predict the voltage and the currents in our circuit. And we're basically going to go through the same process over and over again until we go through all the possible switching states of a circuit. I was really kind of thinking through what we did previously, but just repeating it. And this is just a formal statement of that. And this is the topic of sequential switching.